Stay all day done. I'm tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, yes, there is more. You get a huge dose of personal initiative. That's the go getter energy that moves me, you, him, her, them, and they to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all this together into one bundle, one package, one mindset, one method, one philosophy, one book, one show, one master class. And it's the one you're listening to right now. It is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Today's topic, difference between paying attention to detail and being stuck in the details. How do you know which side you're on? Now, depending on who you are and what you're doing, you could use each phrase at different times. If you're talking about yourself, you may think you're paying attention to detail. If you're talking about somebody else who's taking too long, you might feel like they're stuck in the details. And someone could feel the exact same way about you and themselves based on the situation that they're in. Again, when you're the subject, you may be one of these. But when it's somebody else, then it's a completely different thing. And I'm sure you can relate to that. Today, what we're going to talk about is what we're going to do is do our best to draw a line between the two so you can check yourself and know when are you smartly taking time on something and it makes sense to take time on it and to really get into the weeds of it so that you get the details right versus when are you just delaying and wasting time while using details as a shield or using details as an excuse for you to delay and waste time and yes if you find yourself using oh, I got to make sure I got the details right in certain situations, it's not because you need the details, it's because you just don't want to move on to the next step or you don't want to you know, progress to whatever is coming next for whatever reason. I can't tell you why, but you know why. You may not admit why, but you know why. And you're just getting stuck in the details. So we're going to get, make sure we delineate and make a clear delineation between the two of these here today. Point number one, the topic once again is the difference between attention to detail and stuck in the details. Number one, it's a concept called the minimum effective dosage. And I got to give a hat tip to Tim Ferriss. He was the first person I heard talk about this specifically in his book, The Four Hour Body, where he basically used himself as a human guinea pig to test out certain things with his body, whether it be the type of stuff he was putting in his body, type of things he was doing physically, like going to the gym. How could he, or if he wanted to get skinny, if he wanted to get big, he wanted to build muscle, what are the things that he could do and do it quicker, basically? Because he it called it the four-hour body. Not necessarily that it would take four hours, but instead of spending an hour and a half a day in the gym to get big muscles, there way I could get big muscles by spending only 20 minutes a day in the gym. Again, just a question he was asking, and then he did experiments to try to find out if he could figure it out. And there were a lot of things that Tim revealed in that book, The 4-Hour Body, that I adopted and still use to this very day when it comes to my fitness and when it comes to my workouts. So if you haven't read the book, The 4-Hour Body, then you know what to do. Go get it. But anyway, the minimum effective doses is the first point. And what it is is the smallest dose that will produce the desired outcome, also known as the minimum effective load. What's the smallest amount of effort they can produce the greatest amount of outcome. And if you are, if you read between the lines here, this is basically the 80 20 rule just turned around. What's the 20% of effort that will, that will produce the 80% of results? What you got to understand is with this minimum effective doses being smallest amount of work, time, detail, energy, etc., that still produces a result. Most of the things that you do in life, most of them need not be perfect. And if you listen close to what I'm going to talk about here today, almost everything that we're talking about in this topic when it comes to you know, are we stuck in details, are we paying attention to details, is the 80-20 rule. Is just another way of looking at the 80-20 rule. 80-20 rule being, also known as Pareto's principle, 80% of the results come from 20% of the efforts. 80% of the outputs come from 20% of the inputs. Most of the things that all of us do in life, we don't need them to be perfect. All right? We don't need to pay attention to every single detail. Making them perfect is really just a waste of time. It's not even worth the extra time and effort we have to put into it. If we can get it to 80%, that's good. It's good enough and we can move on to the next thing. They only need, most of the things that we do, every single one of us, only needs the minimum effective dosage. Many people, however, 
they chase perfection instead of being okay with the minimum effective doses, the 80, 20, they chase, they're trying to get 20, 80. They're trying to get 20, 100 rather. They say, all right, instead of putting 20% of effort in and getting 80% of results or 20 minutes of time to get 80 units of results, we want to get 100 units of results. So we're going to put in another 80 minutes of time to get there. So they want to go 100, 100. The problem with trying to go 100, 100 is that you use up a whole lot of your resources and then you don't have time left for everything else that needs to get done. Many people are tasting perfection, buried in useless details, and the question is, why do you do this? Now, understanding this 80-20 rule, Pareto's principle, that 80% of our results are coming from 20% of our actions. The reason why I can tell you that most of the things that you do only require that 20% of input to get the 80% of output is because most of us, we're doing a whole lot of different things. Uh, we got a whole lot of different things going on. Most of them don't fit into a certain aspect, a certain zone in our lives, which I'm going to get to in a minute. And when we find ourselves saying, OK, well, I got to get I got to get this thing to 100 percent. The problem is this. It's kind of like if I would use an analogy of working with a professional athlete. If any of you is a trainer, or any of you is an athlete, a trainer can work with an athlete who is all raw, hasn't done anything, never done any type of training, any kind of workout, and you can apply the 80-20 rule. That player will see an 80% boost in their performance just by doing 20% of what that trainer has to offer simply because the player is raw material. The player hasn't done anything before, so when you first start, for example, lifting weights and you never lifted weights before, you're going to get all these muscles and your body's going to change. You're going to see an 80% change in your body just from the first 20% of the workouts. Why? Because you're working with raw material. There's nothing you, anything you do is going to make you better because you haven't done anything before. But once you get to, once you get all of that 80% of achievement, now to get the last 20% of gains, the last 20% of change in your body, that's going to require the other 80% of work. So you're doing all of this work just to get a small difference. Whereas before you did a little bit of work and you got a huge difference. So with an athlete, let's say if someone is a trainer of a professional athlete, you're doing a whole lot of work trying to make a 1% difference in your performance for that athlete. You might work for a whole year just to get 1% better. Now, am I saying that that's a waste? No, because when I get through these points, you'll understand why that's not a waste, specifically for the person who is at a certain level doing their thing, whatever that thing happens to be. But a lot of people get the 80% result and then... They say, well, I need to get buried in the weeds and I need to get all the details of getting this thing perfect before I move on. I need to get the other 20 percent of results when they don't even need to be doing that. And again, when I get to the rest of these points, you'll understand what I mean by that. An example of this would be a person who I was telling somebody once because in the line of work that they were in, if they were to make some cold calls, it would help them create some new business, drum up some new prospects and things like that. And I said, OK, why don't you just start making some cold calls, call some people and just talk to them, pitch them, try to set up a meeting, things like that. And if they say no, they say no, they hang up on you to hang up on you. But you didn't lose anything because the person who hangs up on you wasn't going to buy anything from you anyway. And the person retorted to me, well, before I start making the cold calls, I got to make sure I have my script. I got to make sure I know what I'm going to say. I got to know how I'm going to respond to their rebuttals or to their objections. And I said to them, you're getting down in the weeds. You're getting lost in the weeds and trying to get all this detail in when you haven't even done any work yet. It's like the person who said to me once, there was a girl, she was going to start going to the gym because she hadn't gone to the gym that much before. And she said, well, before I start going to the gym, because she was asking me to tell her some things she could do in the gym. She said, well, before we start, I want you to know I'm not trying to be one of those bodybuilder girls who looks like a man because she has all these big muscles. Those are the words that she used. And I said to her, well, you haven't even lifted a single weight yet. You're worried about having too much muscle. All right. How about you get some muscle first? How about you get any muscles? Then you can worry about having too much of them. And this is what happens with a lot of people. They're worried about getting the whole 100 percent when they haven't even gotten 80 yet because they haven't put in the 20. So make sure you're not. Uh, you're not using the, oh, I have to get it perfect excuse because you're unwilling to just be okay with the minimum effective doses. In life, 80% of the result is, that will suffice for damn near anything that you're doing. If you're running a business right now and it's just you, you're a solopreneur and you're looking at possibly hiring some people or getting some help getting some other people to do some things on your behalf or doing some other things in your work, but you don't want to, you're hesitant to do so because you're like, well, nobody else can do the job as well as me. I could do this job better than anybody. If I train somebody, it's going to take me on to train them. Then I got to watch over them and then they're not going to be as good as me and I could do it better myself. So I might as well just keep doing it better myself. Here's the problem with that. You doing things better yourself, quote unquote, 
and getting it to 100% or what you see as 100%, uh, what's the ROI on that? What's the ROI on your 100% versus if you were to hire somebody and they were 80% as good as you, what's the return on investment? That extra 20% that you get or the extra 20% of production, we'll just call it, extra 20% of goodness of how well something is done that you would do as opposed to somebody else doing it at 80%, what's the return on investment on that 20%? You probably can't quantify it probably because there is none. So you doing it yourself and getting 100% versus somebody else doing it and getting 80%, that gap, there's, it's, it represents nothing. All right? You're not losing any money because somebody only did it 80% as well. You're not losing any opportunities. You're not losing any clients. You're not losing any prospects. Nothing is being lost in that 20% difference between what you would have did and what that person did. But let me tell you what's being gained. That extra 20%, the time it took you to do that 20%, now it is available for you to focus on something else. Probably something that's within, within your zone of excellence, your zone of competence, which is probably not that thing because if it was, then you wouldn't be outsourcing it and delegating it to somebody else in the first place. But as I get again into these points, you'll understand this even better. Point number two, today's topic is how do you know the difference between paying attention to detail and being stuck in the details? Number two, here's a question. Are you detail chasing just so you can avoid the next step? Now, this is a question that you're going to have to answer honestly because I can't answer this one for you. I can just pose the question and you're going to have to be honest with yourself about it. Are you detail chasing just so you can look and feel busy when you don't, you're not really doing anything, but you want to look like you're being busy or you want to feel like you're busy. You want to feel like you have something on your plate. So you're just chasing after the details and something. You can't leave well enough alone. 80% is not good enough for you. You got to be perfect. So you're just trying to avoid the next step. Are you doing that? I can't say if you are or you're not, but you can say you see, applying this minimum effective dosage method, it allows you to move forward a lot faster because instead of trying to get to 100% and putting in 100 minutes of work, you can put in 20 minutes of work, get 80% of the result, and that's good enough and you can move on to the next thing. You can get a whole lot of things done quickly, which to some people, just even thinking that, it reads as this. Instead of allowing you to move forward faster, they read it as it forces you to move forward much faster. See, some people don't want to move forward fast. Some people don't want to get things done quickly. Some people don't want to have a sense of urgency. Some people don't want to get something to the level where it's good enough and move on to the next thing. You know why? Because they just want to stay where they're at. They just want to stay neutral. They want to stay in the spot that they're at. They don't want to move forward too much faster because moving forward sounds like responsibility. Sounds like, okay, new things that I got to learn. Sounds like new things that I'm going to have to do. It sounds like, all right, this is going to be more stuff on my plate. I don't want to move forward that fast. We need to slow down. I need to take my time. I need to make sure I get it right. These are the kind of statements that people use when they don't want to move forward too fast. Thusly, these people use details as a shield, as a built-in excuse to add time to every situation, to move slowly, to lose and waste time and opportunity, and always have something to point to that they need to get it right first. All right, this is complete bullshit. This is what people do when they're just trying to delay. They don't want to move forward for whatever reason. So instead of just saying, I don't want to move forward, they say, well, no, it's not right. I got to get the details right. I didn't get every word perfect, so I can't move forward just yet. No, I can't move forward yet still. No, I'm still not ready. Give me another day. Give me another week. Give me another year. I'll get to it when I get to it. And then eventually they end up doing, we all know the answer, nothing. So my question is, are you doing this detail chasing just because you don't want to take the next step? You don't want to be responsible for moving forward. Now, all of somebody not want to move forward. Because as I already told you, moving forward means you may have greater responsibilities. There may be greater expectations placed upon you. There may be new work that you need to do. There may be new things that you now need to learn. All of that comes with the forward progress of saying, you know what? I got the minimum effective doses here. This is good enough. Let me move on to the next thing. All right, let me move on to the next thing. I got 80%, move on to the next thing. 80%, move on to the next thing. The time it takes you, again, if you think of Pareto's principle, 80% of the results are coming from 20% of the inputs. So if it takes you 20 minutes, just to keep the number simple, for you to produce, let's just say, uh, eight, a level 80 result in task number one. You got 10 tasks to do. You got a level 80 result on task number one. It took you only 20 minutes. For you to get to a 100 result, you got to put in 80 more minutes. That's the 20-80 rule. 
that to get the last 20% of results, you got to put in 80% of the outputs. Is it worth it? It doesn't mathematically make sense for you to do that. But some people's emotions, because they're afraid of moving forward, because they're afraid of their responsibility and the work that will be required when they move forward, they allow their emotions to overpower their logic because logically it doesn't make sense to use the 20-80 rule. It makes more sense to go 80-20. So it's not their logic that's speaking when they say they don't want to do it. It's their emotions speaking that says, I'm free. But most people are not going to admit that they're afraid of moving forward. So they'll say something like, I need to get the details. And it's just a built-in excuse that a lot of people use. Because getting, using the 80-20 rule and getting that minimum effective doses done frees you up to keep moving. And moving requires change. Moving requires responsibility. Moving means somebody's going to notice you. Moving means things are going to, things are going to happen. And some people don't want things to happen. They just want to stay in the same spot because it's comfortable in that spot. They know what to expect. They know exactly what they're going to get is their comfort zone. And we all know what they say about comfort zones. They say a lot of things about comfort zones. One of them is when you stay in your comfort zone, you're not going to grow. You're not going to get any better. You're not going to advance. You're not going to move forward. Is that what you want? I don't know. You know, but I don't know. Point number three. Today's topic. The difference between paying attention to detail and being stuck in the details. If you are a detailed, focused individual in a certain area, there's some area of your life right now where you've been really, really paying attention to detail. I want you to ask yourself a question. This area in which I'm paying attention to detail, is this within my zone of genius? The thing you're paying so much attention to detail in, is it within your zone of genius? And I shouldn't even have to explain what that means for you to know. It either it is or it's not. Are you a genius at that thing? Are you excellent at that thing? That thing you're paying all the attention to detail in, is that what you're best at? Is that the thing that you do best? If the answer is no, then you should not be paying so much attention to detail in it because you don't have the skill to pay attention to detail. You don't have the skill to get it to 100 because you're not, that's not the thing you're best at. It'll take you forever to get it to 100 if you even get there. And, it'll, and the amount of time it took you to get there, somebody with a whole lot more skill than you could have got 80% of the result and 1 20th of the time that you took. So who's being efficient here? Who's wasting time? The thing that you're going to pay attention to detail in must fall within your zone of genius. It has to be the thing that you're great at, the thing that you do best in life. That's where you should pay attention to detail. Anything that is not in your zone of genius, you should not be paying so much attention to detail in because you're, you won't be paying attention to detail. You'll be stuck in detail because you'll be trying to do things on a detail level that you just do not have the resources to be great at. You don't have the resource to pay attention to detail or something if you have no skill. If you're not talented at it, if it's not in your zone of genius, why would you pay so much attention to detail? What are you going to figure out? Now, you don't know anything to figure it out. You don't know enough to get to a 100, but you're trying to get to a 100. This is how people allow themselves to get stuck or they force themselves to get stuck or they will themselves to get stuck in life by trying to reach 100 at a thing that they don't have the tools to get to a 100 at. Therefore, they just stay in that same spot looking busy, looking like they're working, looking like they're trying hard, looking like they're trying to make progress, but knowing unconsciously or consciously that it's impossible for them to make that progress that they're trying to get to because they don't have the tools. They don't have the resources. So. If you're going to pay attention to detail or you want to call yourself paying attention to detail, make sure it be something that you're great at. All right, things that I personally am not great at, I'm not paying attention to detail. And I do enough to get the 80%, get that 80-20 rule working in my favor. All right, minimum effective doses. Okay, is this good enough? Yes, move on. It's good enough? Yes, move on. Now, if it's something that I'm great at, like let's say doing this show right here, I can push for the 100. All right, damn near every episode I do here, I do in one take. All right, I never stop the recording and have to start over and fix it unless something in my environment goes wrong. Somebody you know, kicks down the door or somebody interrupts me or something happens with the re recording software or something like that. But other than that, I do this straight through one time through and it comes out clean. Why? Because this is in my zone of genius. But if, it, if it's not within your zone of genius to be doing something like this, then you shouldn't be trying to stress about getting it to a 100 because you'll stress yourself out and you'll be pushing yourself to do something that you're not great at, something that you may not even be capable of doing, even no matter how hard you try. How do you think you're going to feel at the end of the day? Where's your energy going to be? You're trying to get to a 100 at something that you ain't great at. What sense does that make? Of course, it makes no sense logically, but emotionally, what sense does it make? 
You are setting yourself up for failure when you chase details in something that is not within your zone of genius. You get the failure, first of all, of achieving the outcome. You won't achieve it. You won't get to 100. You get the failure of resource allocation because you're using your time, effort, attention, and energy on something that you're not great at, which makes no sense. You shouldn't be doing that. Go find somebody who's better than you and let them do it because they'll do it a lot better than you do it. And you also get the failure of opportunity costs. That means everything that you were not doing while you were chasing perfection is something that you're not even good at. That means you weren't doing something that you were good at, which means you robbed yourself of actually achieving at something that you had the skill to be great at. Everything else that you're not doing while you're chasing the details and something that you shouldn't be chasing details in, all of those are the costs of chasing perfection. All of those are the costs of getting stuck in the details. The only place in life where you should allow yourself to get stuck in details is in your specific area of expertise and excellence and genius. What are you an expert at? What are you excellent at? Where are you a genius? If you're doing anything other than those things or that thing, if it's only one, don't worry about the details. Focus on the minimum effective dosage and move on. That's my directive to you. Anywhere else, minimum effective dosage. And if you need it to be at 100, you really need it to be at 100 for whatever reason, okay? Go find somebody who is a genius in that space and give them the job. All right, that's a smart thing to do. The dumb thing is to try to do it yourself, which you will fail at. So you can go fail if you want to, but don't say nobody told you you were going to fail before you did it. All right, don't be stupid. Stupid, dumb means you don't know. All right, ignorant means not to know. Stupid means you know, but you still do the wrong thing. All right, don't be stupid because I just gave you the information. So if you go try to do this anyway, you get stuck in the details of something that you're not great at, that's stupid because you know better. All right, an ignorant person doesn't know better. Stupid person knows better. All right, don't be either one. Point, let's recap today's class, which is the difference between paying attention to details and being stuck in the details. Now, depending on who you are, where you're at, you could be using either one of these at different times. I'm sure you can relate to that. Maybe you've been accused of it. Maybe you've accused others. But we're going to do our best to draw the line of delineation between the two so you can check yourself and know when you are being smart with your time versus when you're wasting time. Number one, minimum effective doses. This is the smallest dose that will produce the desired outcome. Some people call it the minimum effective load. This is the smallest amount of work, time, detail, energy, etc. that still produces the desired outcome. Most of the things we do in life do not need to be perfect. We only need to get them to the 80%. The 80-20 rule, 20% of your input will get you 80% of the result. That is good enough. All right, you're getting a four times return on investment. Don't go chasing a perfect return on investment. You're going to end up losing your shirt. Point number two, are you detail chasing to avoid the next steps? Are you trying to look and feel busy when you don't really have much going on? Because if you're applying a minimum effective doses method, you should be able to move forward very quickly. What some people read as fear as if they're being forced to move too quickly. A lot of people don't want to move forward because moving forward means new responsibilities, new work, new efforts, change. And a lot of people don't want to deal with any of the above. So they say, I need to get it right first. Like I get all the details right. It's complete bullshit. All they're doing is giving you an excuse because they don't want to deal with whatever is coming next. Point number three or what they think is coming next. Point number three. If you're going to be detail focused in your life, make sure you're being detail focused on something in which you are in your zone of genius. If you are not in your zone of genius, but you're chasing details, you're setting yourself up to lose. Failure of achieving the outcome, failure of resource allocation, and failure of opportunity calls. You get three failures in one. All right, Three birds with one stone when you are chasing details in something in which you are not a genius. The only place where you should allow yourself to get stuck in details is in your specific area or areas of excellence. Anywhere else, either opt for the minimum effective doses or find someone who is a genius at that thing and let them get the 100. But you should not be chasing it. And if you are chasing it, you are hustling backwards. Work on your game. Dre all.